the covenant areas uh, that PPG and, and now the city ha has, is responsible for and has agreed to enforce with the Missouri Department of Natural Resources. There are two areas of restrictive covenants, and nowhere in the materials that you've been provided by Wings can I find any location, any drawing that shows you where those areas are. And those areas <coughs> are setbacks, effectively. They're areas where building is restricted, the same as your normal building setbacks under your zoning ordinance. And it's important for you to understand that I suggested in the materials that I have submitted, uh, and, and that were marked as an exhibit, um, that a drawing uh, that is called a subsurface estate study plan was prepared by Melka Sanchez of Bowles. Uh, it's actually labeled my exhibit J to my uh, letter. Uh, and another plaque that was actually in the city records in exhibit K showed the location of the restrictive covenant areas. And what's important is if you look at and overlay, we don't have it all in one place because we just didn't submit that. If you look at and overlay the area of restrictive covenant with the location of the settlement retention ponds, with the location of actual buildings, you can see that those are proposed in areas of the restrictive covenants. The restrictive covenants were put in place in an agreement with PPG that this city now has to enforce because there were environmental contamination problems in the area just below the soil surface. The only way this property has been remediated is with a relatively uh, small cap of soil that as soon as you start digging for a, a retention pond, as soon as you start digging to put footers in for any type of building, you're going to run into a problem where you've disturbed uh, what has been previously identified as environmental contamination by uh, the Missouri Department of Natural Resources. Certainly, that exposure of those items is a, is a subject of public health and safety that's part of your duties here. And I submit to you that you can't just rely on the Missouri Department of Natural Resources at some future date to consider what, that, what may happen with regard to that. It, it, it's important for you to look at what is the real impact and what the real the, the effect of the restrictive covenants when you look at it against that site plan and the location of those improvements the Wings proposes. So since it, since it is really is a public health and safety issue, it's, uh, it's something that you really cannot delegate an obligation on. It's up to you to protect your residents and those in the vicinity uh, for, to, to protect against exposure to these environmental contamination issues. And uh, you as a city actually have a totally different statutory role than the Missouri Department of Natural Resources. And your job is really the frontline protector of public health and safety for the, the residents in your city and the area in the vicinity of the property. And so I submit to you that you need to understand better what is the real impact of these improvements on the areas that are restricted from construction, restricted from um, digging. Uh, there are all kinds of restrictions in these. I've submitted in the materials the whole sets of restrictions, the drawings. You can look at the language yourself. It's understandable to lay people. There's a serious public health and safety issue here that I think you really need to consider. Next, and I haven't heard any real discussion of this, there's a serious uh, public health and safety issue from the disposal of water from the slurry pipeline um, that you need to consider, and I have not seen any discussion about that quantity of water that's going to be discharged. Um, Mr. Alberici, and, and I, it's not clear, Brian, uh, or Brandon, it's not clear to me whether Mr. Uh, Niemeyer's Alberici memorandum of February 11th is in the record yet. It's, it's Mr. Niemeyer's memorandum to Mr. Kozol dated February 11th, 2009. It's a bunch of questions and answers broken down by different subject matters. In response to a memo by Edmund I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. In response to a memo by Edmund Kemp, is that what you're referring to? Yes, it does appear to be. That is in the record. Thank you. Um, so in that material that is, is in the record from uh, Mr. Niemeyer's responses, uh, 
Um, it is clear that 1,200 gallons of water per minute are, are going to be discharged. It's not clear where it's going to be discharged yet because that's not set out in any of the site plans or in any of the public presentations. Um, and and then the wing's response is, well, we're going to work this out with MDNR because they have to have a, a discharge pit permit, which is, which is true. But the problem is, is that the discharge permits are basically under the Clean Water Law. And Missouri Department of Natural Resources is only concerned about the content of the water. It doesn't concern itself about the volume of water. And so you're talking about disposing of, I mean, 1,200 gallons per minute, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Let's talk a little bit about that. That's 1,728,000 gallons of water per day. It's going to be discharged into some as yet unknown location within this site. But this whole site generally is, is in an area that's prone to flood. Now certainly some areas are out of the flood zone, but where this is going to be discharged is an area which, which is flood prone. Back part of the northern area that actually flooded last year. Um, that equates also to over 12 million gallons of water per week that's in a constant discharge somewhere in Black Creek, in the Mississippi River. It's not clear where it's going, but it's going somewhere. It's certainly going to raise water tables. It's certainly going to raise creek levels. It's certainly going to raise water. That's 630 million gallons of water per year that has to be discharged somewhere. You're already in an area that's prone to flooding. I think it's incumbent upon you to figure out what does that really mean? And where is that water really going? And what impact does it have on our home, on residents in the area, on other businesses in the area, on, on everything that's going on in the vicinity? I will certainly tell you that my client, the owner of the, uh, the old mine property um, across Platte Creek, is very concerned that the water level is going to be going to raise so much that he's going to end up with flooding problems in his particular mine property, in the mines, and in his um, in, in, the, in the area of, of where, where uh, uh, you cross the Platte Bridge over there. I think it's important for you to consider also because you obviously, in a regular way, have water back up Platte Creek when the Missouri River route rises. What's going to happen while this water continues to be discharged? If you're in a flood state, when the water's up, I haven't heard any answers or responses to those kinds of issues. And I think that it's really important for you to get those kinds of answers before you can really decide, hey, this thing passes and, and it's safe for the public health and, and welfare of, of the people of Crystal City. So another issue that surrounds around uh, this an issue that surrounds the story pipeline um, is that um, the pipeline is, it's not clear where the pipeline is really being located. In his responses in that memorandum, Mr. Niemeyer, sort of contrary to the site plan, which shows the location of an underground pipeline, he says they don't really know where the pipeline, the story pipeline is going to be located anywhere. Well, certainly, it's, it's important for you not to worry just about where the pipeline is located on the site, but where is the pipeline going to be located in the city? And what impact does that have, for example, on traffic? What impact does that have on other aspects of the city when the pipeline is being located uh, somewhere uh, in the city but you don't, you don't currently know where that's going to be? How can you go ahead and prove uh, that kind of a project when, when you really need to know what, where the location of the story pipeline is going to be. Um, I also want to point out that it's not clear how Wings is going to acquire right away in your city for the pipeline. Certainly it's shown on its own, look, on its own site where it might locate it, but that pipeline's coming all the way from the Pea Ridge Mine. Are you going to be asked at a later date to use eminent domain to help acquire the pipeline right away? I think those are issues that certainly impact your city and, and the, the whole issues and concerns of, of your city with respect to that. Is the possible use of eminent domain?